Hi there. In this video, I'll show you how you can convert an ink drawing or a pencil drawing into something that you can work with digitally. So, uh, what you want to do is just uh, get your image, lay it out somewhere where you have nice even lighting, and just try to get some good uh, in focus shots. If it's too blurry, it's going to be a little bit harder to work with, but you know, you don't have to get the world's greatest picture. Um, you can use your iPad or your iPhone or just a digital camera, anything that will take quick digital pictures um, that are decent quality. So since I'm recording on my iPad, I can't take any pictures, so I'm going to do that in the next step. But once you've got some pictures of your ink or your pencil drawing, uh, we can move forward. So once you've snapped a few images, go ahead and download them to your computer using a USB cable or however your camera hooks up to your computer. and look through your images and choose the best one, the one that's the sharpest and the most well-lit. Uh, that'll be the easiest one to work with. And once you have it selected, go ahead and just open it in Painter by going to File and Open, and then save it. Um, do a Save As, and we'll save it as a RIF. That way we can still keep our original. So, what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and use the Marquee Selection tool the rectangular selection tool to just draw a selection around what we want to keep which will just be this right here and I'm going to uh, copy it and we can make a new canvas and we can decide what what size canvas we want I think I'll do 18 by 24 oops I think I want the other orientation though I want 18 by 24 so that it's going the other way like this and then we'll do a paste and then we've got our tiny image here and we'll just need to adjust it a little bit so we can go to the edit menu and go to free transform and then we can scale it up I'm gonna hold shift and alt on my keyboard and that way it'll scale up from the center and it'll stay in perspective so I'm just gonna scale it up to maybe right about there. And we'll click this checkbox to commit to that. There's two ways to do this. One is you could just try to adjust the colors to make this background go away and then just keep this dark that you have here so you don't have to redraw it. But I want to show you how you can just go ahead and just redraw something and ink it in Painter. So let's call this uh, image. This is just our reference image. We can make it a little more transparent by turning down the opacity here. And then we'll make a new layer. And we'll just call it ink. This will be our ink. And you can decide what color ink you want to use. I'm going to use black and we'll use the custom scratch board tool because that gives us a real nice uh, opaque smooth line. We'll zoom into where we can see here and we'll pick a brush size that is appropriate. I think something like Eight will work in this case. Sometimes it's good to just make a little note of what your brush size is in case somehow it ends up getting changed. Uh, you'll be able to keep a consistent brush width, which is important because if you're tracing an ink drawing, um, you probably a lot of the time, and same thing with pencil, you're probably using a pencil that's a set line width. But now you can just go over this and just ink it however you want. Um, in this case I'm just going to kind of use smooth lines, but sometimes when I ink I might kind of do really quick strokes like this depending on the style, but in this case the way I drew this ink image uh, with the pen I did kind of more of a smooth style here. I go through and just ink everything. And that's kind of a bummer because you'll have to draw your image again. But this gives you the best results and gives you an opportunity to kind of clean some things up to refine the image to get it looking even better. Uh, but again, this is something that you could use uh, to make merchandise or. Uh, use online. 
that just gives you a, a cleaner image to work with rather than you know whatever it is that you had on paper that you were working with You don't have to follow your lines exactly. I'm going to be a little sloppy here because I don't want this video to take four hours. That wouldn't take that long, but you know. I'm just getting it done quick so that you can just see the technique and not have to spend all day watching me doodle. If you have trouble seeing what's going on, you can always bring your image back. I just want to get a look at that and see what I'm doing there. And be careful to make sure that you're drawing on the right layer too. I'm doing this ink on its own layer. I don't want to accidentally be drawing on the image layer because then I'm going to ruin my image. I've got our iris here. This is really something um, that would be a lot easier to do uh, with a vector program like Illustrator uh, because it just makes it easier to draw these lines. However, you'd get a slightly different result in it. You know, if you've never worked with um, vectors before, it's probably going to be a real pain to figure it out. So maybe this is what would be easier for most people. At least most people who are used to drawing freehand. And there's some of these smaller lines here that I drew in a little bit thinner. So I'll make a different brush size for that. And we'll try. Two looks good. So I'm just going to make a note of that. We can erase these little notes later. Got some hatching we can do here. Trying to taper off my strokes so that it looks like a pen. I do it. And there's some hatching in the hair here. So another thing to mention is that, you know, if you do a lot of drawings like this, maybe it would just be easier just to make a habit of doing more drawing with painter rather than with ink or with pencil then you don't have to do all this extra work of redrawing it in again but you know I know some people like to work with ink and pencil more than they like to work digitally and you know I do like to do ink drawings on paper a lot more than I like doing them on the computer actually so but it's just a suggestion to make your life a little easier and then you can always enhance what you have. You can add more detail if you want. You don't have to stick with uh, what you have in your reference image. But you can see I could go through and ink this whole thing and get it looking good. I'm not going to do the whole thing because, you know, that's just unnecessary right now. And let's look at coloring now. So we'll add a new layer. We'll call it color one. We'll add multiple colors here. Now, how you want to shade this is up to you. You could use flat color, you could use uh, three-dimensional shading. I mean, you could do anything you want to do here. So I'm just going to show you an example of my workflow uh, for how I would color something. So regardless of how you're going to shade it, what would be easiest is if you could fill some of these areas with a flat color first, and then that way, uh, when you want to shade them later, they'll kind of be isolated. So let's say that we'll do the hair as one color. I'm just gonna pick a bright color that I can see but this isn't necessarily gonna be the final color of the hair. I'm just filling it in with something, some flat color. So 
So I'll go through and fill this in. I wouldn't recommend trying to use the paint bucket because it probably won't work. But you want to make sure that it's nice and opaque and evenly filled in. It goes all the way to the edge. This ink layer is on top of it, so you know you only have to go up into the black, but make sure that you go enough into the black to where you don't have a little bit of fringe around the edge or anything. So that's the hair. Let's add one for the skin. Let's pick another color. It doesn't matter what color we use. Usually when I'm doing these flat colors, I just try to pick something that I can see really easily that doesn't blend in with the other colors that I've chosen. So, you know, I picked a blue. I didn't I didn't go in and pick another red because uh, it would just look too much like what I selected for the hair. You see, I go along and I do the edges first because those are the only parts that you really have to be careful about. And then in the center, I just make a big brush to quickly fill in the rest. No sense in spending forever doing this. Okay, skin. Let's do... Uh, we don't need to do separate layers for everything else, so let's just do... Eye lip. This will be the eye and the lip. Because you can combine things, you know. You don't. You don't need to have half a million layers here for this. Okay. Now, if we want to do some shading, it's pretty easy to do. Uh, we just go to, let's say, the skin layer, and we'll turn on Preserve Transparency. And now we can shade it however we want. If we want to use uh, three-dimensional shading, we can do that. So you can go in and do some really nice shading here on this. Get it looking the way you want. You could keep it as flat color, how we had it just a minute ago. So you could do that. You could add as many colors as you like to it and you know really add as much detail as you want to get it looking appropriate for what fits the vision in your mind. Or if you just wanted to do it as flat color you could leave it as one color and then you could pick a uh, shadow color here and then you could just do uh, flat color shading so what's important is that you put in these flat colors first because that'll just make it a lot easier to do this kind of stuff because uh, then you don't have to worry about constantly keeping in the lines you just you figure out what areas are going to be different colors first and then reserve them and then it makes it a million times easier to deal with them later. So I think in this case I kind of like this flat color shading here. I think that works the best for this particular piece. And let's do some work on the hair. I think I like this color. These colors I picked arbitrarily I actually like in this case so sometimes finding the, the right color for these reds is can be a little tricky I'll go with something like that let's do the eye oh, we gotta go to the right layer, the eye lip layer kinda like that purple color for the eyes and lips to tell you the truth so we'll stick with that. A little bit of definition. And a 
if we wanted to, go back to the skin layer and just maybe add some little specs to give it some texture. And there you go, you can see it's really pretty easy to take something that you didn't make digitally and make it digital and still have it look, you know, pretty much the same, but be able to enhance it and make it more versatile. And now if I turn off this background image, you can see this is something that if I wanted to, I could print it with transparency. This could be a decal, you know, that I could print on a shirt or a iPhone case um, or stickers, anything really. Um, I put it on the web, you know, and it looks really clean. It looks really nice. So have fun with this and thanks for watching. Stay tuned for my next video.